The second play in the single back doubles north mini scheme is the play slot corner, which is not an audible like the halfback pitch. So you're going to have to come out in slot corner or halfback pitch. What you're looking at here is my favorite quick snap setup just by putting square on a fade. Now the reason we put fades instead of streaks is because it's going to do a better job at holding outside defenders against that corner route to triangle. I generally like to run this quick snap setup with X on the or sorry square on the fade when we're on the right hash, but it really doesn't matter. It's just a preference because of the way that triangle and circle can get open. Now the next setup is by putting circle on a fade, leaving square as is, and then just motioning circle over and snapping the ball once he gets in behind triangle, just like we do in the halfback pitch. We're pitching with motion to the left, so we need pass plays where we motion circle to the left as well. So that's going to be the setup for there. So really it's only one adjustment for either of those. Now, when we're on the right hash, more so the right hash, um, I like to put square on a fade, option R1 in the backfield, and then motion triangle over to the right, just so that we have another play that we can use the halfback pitch with because sometimes we're gonna be motioning over to the right and running the halfback pitch that way. So here is gonna be a double post. Now this is the first setup that we're gonna be looking at. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pause the gameplay footage right here. And I'm gonna tell you that I had planned on collecting gameplay footage of every single example, just like I always do. But I had been running this single back doubles north for a little while and collecting gameplay footage. And I have an abundance of clips of throwing to X, R1, and circle. Not very many clips of throwing to triangle. And the reason for that is because they always covered the same guys every time. Every time I ran this setup throughout a lot of these plays, they kept just covering the same people no matter who I played. Always covering the same people. And my rule is if it's available, take it. So if the drag is there, take it. If the underneath route's there, take it. I'm not going to force it and show you guys gameplay of me when I just was forcing a ball or something like that. So what we've got here is a situation where he's covering triangle and we have two options, circle or R1 underneath. Now circle is my read against cover two and then triangle is my read against cover two or any type of cover three or cover four because X is gonna pull down any type of flat zone and then triangle is gonna get in behind underneath on the sideline or if they play over the top coverage on triangle then X is going to be the read underneath. So here he's covering triangle, and then I just throw to circle in between the safeties as they split. So as you see here, we motion again. We snap the ball as soon as he gets past the tight end, not before, because if you go before, he's going to block. So get into practice mode, and you can just practice the timing of the snap. And again, take a look. They're just all over triangle. So I've got here in this situation two reads, circle, or R1, because he's not going to be able to cover at all. It's a cover two, so I'm of course going to take the deeper route. Circle is going to be the route that you beat cover two with. Now again, we fake like we're running the ball, so we fake flip, then we use the motion to make him think we're running in that direction. This time we pass lead to the outside. A Little bit of a scary throw, but certainly can still be done, and we hit circle. Now with the motion, our, our first read is typically going to be X because it's a drag underneath. But a lot of the times they might want to jump the tight end. A lot of good players, that's what they do is their first read is going to be jumping the tight end, especially on a blitz. So if they blitz and we motion triangle, that can be a nice quick read to pick up about six, seven, eight, nine yards. You know, really it kind of depends. We're going to motion again. And this time they're playing single high safety. So I know that circle is more of a risky throw, especially against a 91 overall safety like an Earl Thomas. So I need to be on point with my reads. Here he doesn't end up covering triangle, so I take it. Um, it was either triangle or I could potentially go to R1 underneath. That's basically just how everything goes. So here I know I'm going to quick snap. So quick snap right away. And I really like the drag just over and over. Just make them 
play the drag because I'm going to take the five yards that we can turn into however many yards, you know, over and over again. And just take a look here. He's actually on, he got stuck on the lineman because, uh, I don't know, for whatever reason, he got stuck on the lineman. I could have taken the deeper routes, but I'm so fixated on the idea that just take what's there. And my first read is X. So as you see right there, I turn that into a nice eight yard gain. Here we motion circle over, we snap right once he gets in behind triangle. And I really like R1 as a first quick read, but here you see that he's covered. So I end up taking the tight end. Just take the tight end all day long until they cover it. Force them to cover it so that we can now open up some of these other reads. And again, we quick snap, they're not ready. They're gonna be setting up some sort of defense. With this scheme, you're going to be running a lot of motion and they're going to get used to the fact that you're going to be taking time to run these motions. So you're going to catch them off guard. And when you catch them off guard trying to set up different defenses, that's when the quick snaps work really, really well, especially in scenarios like this where they leave R1 wide open. This particular wheel route is better than a manual wheel route that you put um, by yourself just because of the way that you can throw it um, early or later and not have to worry about an incompletion the way that it cuts up field is really really nice as well so again we motion over he's sitting there waiting lurking he doesn't know who to cover I mean we've got so many high lows going on here with X and R1 and triangle and circle it's a just a really nice setup and play overall so he's kind of running back and forth um, we actually could have hit circle in behind, but we just take underneath. As you see, he's running all over the place. He doesn't know what to do. We just hit R1 underneath. And again, look at him. He's just running around. Forgot about the fact that we've got the wheel route, and now we put ourselves in a nice fourth and one situation. So slot corner is not an audible, but it's a really nice play that you can come out in. And as you can see, these reads... I actually had square for a touchdown, but I never look at square. I, I really don't. Um, you should probably have a streak on the field at all times in Madden just because of scenarios like this. It could end up being a touchdown. I just didn't look at it. I don't necessarily have the best reads. I am the type of person that I'll read the safeties first to get an idea of what they're doing and then check down from there. But just take a look at the separation that we're getting with all of these routes. And it's just really, really nice. So if you're the type of person that likes to look at the streak first, um, you know, by all means, go ahead. But as you can see, we've just got really nice separation. Here it's a cover two. We roll out and we hit the wheel for a touchdown. So just remember the different setups that we showed at the beginning of the video. Um, those are nice quick references. So if you need to come back and take a look at the setups or even take a screenshot so you can save those setups for yourself uh, to get a better idea. As you see right here, he's going and lurking and R1 is going to be wide open. So we're just going to take it. We're not even going to worry about pressure. Um, you know, block sheds are so nasty in this game and they can happen at any moment. So to sit there and go, oh, I'm going to wait, I'm going to wait for circle. No, no, just dump it off before the block shed gets to you. Take the yards. Don't sit there and try and wait. So many people get frustrated and angry at the game because they wait and they wait and they wait because they know that if a certain coverage um, is played by their opponent and they have enough time, they're going to be able to burn them for a big touchdown, which is true. But if you take a quick look at the defensive line and you have a route that's really wide open underneath, just take the yards and think about the next play when the next play happens.